Oh, is off-grid a good option? Can I do it? Is it expensive? How does it compare against a regular solar install? If you're looking to get some of these answers, and if you're thinking of getting your cabin or your home to run off solar power, and you're evaluating whether going completely off-grid is a good idea, stick around. I will design an off-grid system for a small home or cabin. I'll price it out, and I'll compare it against a regular solar install. Now, for folks, regular grid-tight solar systems send excess power to the grid. Unless such systems have a battery, which is rare actually, they stop working during a power outage. And your home is without power like your neighbors who don't have solar. An off-grid system, on the other hand, is completely self-contained and runs everything of solar power and battery. Excess solar production is stored in the batteries. I will start with the challenges of going off-grid, and then I will go into sizing and equipment required for an off-grid system like this. I will price out the components. And finally, I'll compare it against a regular grid-tied solar install. Now, off-grid systems have got four major components. One are the solar panels. These generate energy during the day. Number two, the energy needs to be stored. You have batteries for that. That's component number two. Now, solar panels produce energy in bursts. You know, the cloud comes in front, the sun's down a lot. So the energy from the solar panels, it goes up and down, and you can't directly feed it to your battery. You need a solar charge controller, which is our third component between the panels and the battery. This manages the power from your solar panels and the charging for your battery. The fourth and final component is an inverter. So this is to use the battery's energy, which is regular DC power, convert it to AC, and you use it in your home energy. Now, going off-grid without connectivity to the electric company or the grid has got three specific challenges. Number one is the biggest one is going off-grid is a DIY project. You will now be able to hire a contractor and get the project outsourced. Regular solar companies just don't install off-grid systems. So you have to be fairly handy doing electrical wiring or take help of a friend who is preferably an electrician. Number two, you will have to size the system for your needs. Select the equipment, the number of solar panels, the number of batteries, what kind of solar charge controller, inverter, etc. It's not easy. I'm going to help you with the design and choose the equipment when we do our example next. Third is warranty support. Not available. Usually very short term. One year to five years is what you get for most of the components that you have to buy. So all maintenance and troubleshooting and trouble, that's on you. All right, so let's get to our first off-grid system. Now the first step in the process is to figure out the energy requirement for your home or cabin. What will be power? and how much energy will be needed every day. For this, we need a consumption calculator. It's easy. I have a link for a download below, but here's what we're gonna look at for our cabin today. We have four LED lights in the cabin, each with a power consumption of 20 watts. They'll run for about eight hours a day. So if you multiply the two, you get 640 watt hours which is the energy they consume every day. Similarly, a laptop running eight hours a day, consume about 65 watts per hour, will do 520 watt hours. A 40 inch TV for four hours at 60 watts an hour would require about 240 watt hours. A regular fridge will consume about 120 watts an hour. That's only for eight hours, for a total of 960 watt hours. The reason being that even though the fridge runs for 24 hours, its compressor only runs for about eight hours. Hence the eight hours in our calculation. Let's say you run a microwave for about half an hour a day. That uses about 650 watts. You'll consume about 325 watt hours. Maybe you use a power tool or a miter saw. Maybe you run it for about a day. That would require about a thousand watt hours. So now an off-grid system requires an inverter and we have to add the consumption for that inverter to it. Keeping it at about 30 watts and running it 24 hours adds about 70 720 watt hours to our daily consumption. 
Thus, the total daily energy consumption for our cabin or small house is 4,405 watt hours. Now, if we add the continuous power consumption of all the loads, it adds up to 1945 watts continuous. That's the maximum power required during normal operations. If everything is running in your home, that's about what? That's about the amount of power you need on a regular basis, continuous power. Now, the startup power or the surge power is required to start your power tools and the microwave. You need about 1200 watts for the microwave, about 800 watts for the refrigerator. This surge needs that your battery should be able to offer that through your inverter for a short period of time. If we add up the surge power, we need a total of about 4,035 watts of surge power. So our cabin can do with a 3,000 watt inverter. That'll be ideal. It'll easily cover the 1945 watts of continuous power. And also they usually have 6,000 watts surge capacity. So 4,000 watts of surge will be easily done. Next, we have to decide how many days of autonomy we want in our off-grid system. That's basically the number of days we would like to power the cabin, even if there is no sunlight. No, a couple of days of storm or something like that. For practical purposes, two days of autonomy should work fine. I don't think you're gonna have no sunlight for two, more than two continuous days. Solar panels do work during cloudy days and you know, less light. It's only super bad weather when it's really dark when they stop working. So for our cabin with 4,405 watts a day, if you need two days of autonomy, that's two into 4405, that's 8,810 watt hours for two days. Step two is now sizing the battery system. The battery system must have a capacity, a usable capacity of 8,810 watts. Now the options are lead acid batteries or lithium ferrous phosphate batteries. Now the lithium ferrous phosphate or life PO4 batteries are my preferred choice. They have multiple advantages much higher usable capacity. About 97% of the energy stored in a lithium battery can be safely used without damaging the battery. With a lead acid battery, that's just 50%. It's practically zero maintenance, can be safely kept inside your cabin, it'll occupy less than a fifth of the space, and it's so much lighter than lead acid batteries. We're talking about 100 pounds versus 1,000 pounds. So I am not going to consider lead acid batteries, plus they are a little dangerous, they need vents, etc. So how many lithium batteries do we need? With a usable capacity of 8,810 watts, most batteries have a usable capacity of 97%. So if you divide 8,810 by 0.97, we need a battery capacity of 9,082 watt hours. Now lithium batteries come in 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt options. For our cabin, it will be prudent to use the 48 volt option. This will have the lowest cost of wiring and lower cost charge controllers. Now we got to calculate the size of the 48 volt battery. Now the actual voltage of a 48 volt battery is 51.2 volts. So if you divide 9082 by 51.2, you get 178 amp hour 48 volt battery. So for our cabin, we're going to use a 48 volt lithium ferrous phosphate server rack battery along with a 3000 watt inverter. One of the most popular 3000 watt inverters in Amazon is, and remember, choose a 48 volt inverter. The most common ones are 12 volt or 24 volt. You make sure you choose a 48 volt version so it's compatible with our 48 volt lithium batteries. Now for batteries, we can use two 48 volt 100 amp server rack batteries with a total energy capacity of 9006 watt hours. That's slightly more than I required, 9,082 watt hours. Finally, we have to size for the solar panels to charge the batteries. We need 9,082 watt hours every day to, fully, to, to charge our battery with enough capacity for two days of autonomy for our cabin. Now, most regions in the US get three or more hours of full solar insulation every day. There is a site called PV Watts where we can actually measure the sun hours in your location by month. For example, if you look at my location, Princeton, New Jersey, the minimum sun hours is 2.72 in the month of December. It's more than that in every other month, going up to six hours in the summer. So for our calculations for panels, let's assume our location will get at least three hours of solar radiation every day. 
and the panels will have to generate at least 9080 watt hours in those three hours. Divide 9082 by 3, we need 3027 watts every hour. Now there's 5% loss through the solar charge controller. So if you divide 3027 by 0.95, we need about 3186 watts. Six 550 watts sun gold power panels will work. That will add up to a total of 6 into 550 or 3300 watts. Finally, we need the solar charge controller to harness the power from the solar panels, optimize the charging of the battery. We have 3,300 watts of solar panels. Divide that by the charging volts of the battery, 57.6. We get 57.29 amps. Add a safety factor of 20% and we come 70 amps. So we need a 70 amps charge controller. The Victron 250-70 model solar charge controller has the voltage input cap capability to charge the 48 volt lithium batteries using the six sun gold power panels in a 3S 2P combination. That's three panels in series and two rows of three panels. So there you have it. For your off-grid solar panel, you are going to power it with six 550 watt solar panels with two 48 volt 100 amp power lithium batteries and the 3000 watt inverter with a Victron charge controller. The equipment cost for this off-grid system, I looked at all on Amazon, 2729 for the panels for two batteries, 9,600 hours of capacity. Watt hours will be 2,800 bucks. The Victron 250 is at 478 bucks. The XYZ 3000 watt 48 volt inverter is about $303. You'll have to budget about $750 for miscellaneous wires, fuses, breakers, etc., totaling about $7,600. Let's compare this to a grid tight solar system, something that you'll ask a contractor to build for you. 3,300 watts of solar panels from nationally recognized brands like QCell or REC. You need a 10 kWh battery for say a Tesla or an N phase. And a grid tight system in this combination will retail anywhere from between 20 to 25,000. So why is there such a big difference? There is a 20 to 30% premium for the solar panels and battery costs nationwide warranty costs all of that. The solar panels are higher efficiency, the batteries have better performance, and the warranties are much longer. The other costs are liability insurance, workers' compensation insurance, 15, 20-year warranty, those costs, the cost of trucks, truck rolls, labor. That's why you have this huge difference. So as you can see, going off-grid can be significantly cheaper, but requires much higher skill levels in terms of doing it yourself. Designing is not a trivial task, but you end up with a system which is a third of the cost of when you buy it through a recognized solar installer. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Do like and subscribe and have a great day.